Um, I'd like to, to move to Q&A. As, as promised, we have uh, just 10 to 15 minutes. But if you, if you take away just two things from today, I hope you remember, spend the time to find the right partners up front. Whether it's an agent, a service provider, or an actual factory, the worst thing that can happen to you is you come to China and you're saying, okay, I only have 10 days in China. I've got to make this work. I'm not sure if he's right or not, but I need to fly home, so let's give it a try. That's not the way to do it. Change your tickets, spend a little bit more time, make sure that your partner is right, because once you spend money, get a purchase order, it's too late to change, not only in time, but your investment. So spend the time up front to find the right partners from day one. If you're not 100% sure this factory's not a good, isn't the right fit, keep looking, because there are so many factories out there, you will find one. It's, that's the beauty of China. There's, uh, there's, there are great factories out there. Now, after you found the, the factory, um, and I know my presentation was supposed to focus on how to find the factory, but I want to dive a little bit into how to manage the factory and protect yourself because it's so important, please link the supplier's performance to payment. Meaning, okay, Mr. S supplier, I'm going to give you the 30% deposit up front, but I'm not going to pay that final 70% until after my third party or myself has come in and inspected the goods right before it ships out. If you just think, okay, I'm going to hold off that 70% until it ships, what happens is most of the suppliers make the mistake of saying final 70% due upon um, provision of shipping documents. You get the bill of lading and you think, all right, it's on the boat. And I'm saying, I'll give that 70%. But if it's a load of junk and it shows up and you can't sell it, you don't have any recourse. So you have to do that quality gate, either you fly to China or your representatives or you hire somebody, but make sure someone checks the product before it ships out and before that final payment. On that note, I, I hope that, uh, I'd like to thank Global Sources for just letting me over the past few years come up here and tell you the way I see it, the way it is. It's not the rosy picture that everything's easy in China, you're gonna make lots of money, go, you can do it, place a purchase order, relax. No, it, it is scary out there, but you can be successful if you if you plan accordingly. So I thank Global Sources for just letting me talk freely about some, some of these sensitive items. Um, also, I'm pretty easy to find. There's my website, um, website down there, and my, my personal address at the company, Passage Maker. So I'd like to move it to question and answer. And just as the background, if you do need help, the China Service Center is available with all those providers. Um, also, the information center where I volunteer has all of the free information. And just last week, or a few weeks ago, I heard about a new service called Supplier Blacklist. So if you have a supplier that has done you wrong, tell other buyers about it by listing them on the Supplier Blacklist. I think it's down for, for construction, but it should be back up soon. So on that note, I am happy any questions that you have. Um, and we have a microphone. So thank you for your time today. Uh, sort of a down in the weeds question, but um, as a distributor, yes. you've got uh, buyers who like to touch and feel the product too before they make a decision. So yeah. it's you're sort of brokering, trying to get that deal across the line. Yeah. Product samples, would you consider that the same as test samples, or how would you keep that? Open? You know, I had a, I think you caught me. I rushed over a slide and I forgot to talk about the golden sample versus production sample. My bad, so I should have covered that. <laughs> let, let me do it right now. The, the, a dangerous thing to ask your supplier is, just give me a sample, because you're thinking that's a sample from the production line. They're thinking, this is kind of like what we could make for you if you place the order. <laughs> I've had samples sent to me that were my production parts from the marketplace that were purchased, delivered to me, said, yes, this is what we can make. Well, that's a lot different from what did you make. So I talk about give me a production sample versus a golden sample. The golden sample is the supplier knows that this sample is going to meet your requirements. Either they bought it from someone else or they put their best engineers, their best equipment, and they got it perfect. It's to get the order. It's to go to the trade show to have the best thing there. So when you're getting your orders, if it's something that has been made before, you want a production sample. If it's something that's being made for the first time to your customer spec, then you need to step back and manage 
you're the distributor, so you need to manage expectations. Okay, this first sample is for conformance, or it's, a, it's to validate a concept. Does it fit the functionality? Is it safe? It's a prototype. So you, you have to che choose your wording carefully, and then organize it with a supplier. Thank you for that. Just one other question, too. Broadly, how, and this is an open question, but how many times do you think you would have to visit China to get this right? I moved here. Yeah, right, okay. <laughs> um, I'll look you up. <laughs> that, that's, my, that's my business, so every right, day. Okay. But no, I, I, I know plenty of customers that, uh, first off, if you find the right supplier up front so that you don't have to hold their hand every day, then in theory, you shouldn't have to make so many trips over. Also, you can engage third parties for a couple hundred bucks to do an audit, do an inspection for you. But it's still very valuable for you to press the flesh, shake the hands, let the supplier know that you're a real person, that you pay on time, you may have to sit through some karaoke or some big dinners with nasty baijiu alcohol, but it's going to build a good relationship. And so it's, you get a lot of value add by coming to China. Do you have to do it? No, there are plenty of eBay power sellers that I know that have made a living and never came to China. Okay. Alcohol and dinners, you've covered my tactics. All right. You'll do fine. Yeah. We have uh, time for some more questions if there are any. Oh, okay. yes. Yeah. Um, yeah, I would like to ask what's the best way to actually make sure that the certification uh -huh. is valid? It's sure. too valid, but we just can get some test results, which is some batch samples. Um, how can we make sure? Yeah, sorry. How can we make sure that the certification is still valid, like CE marks and our Yes. Yeah. Most of um, the, uh, for example, the CE and the laboratories and ISO, they know that buyers are concerned. So you can you can go to the web the website and you will find the like the ISO certification number through through what uh, organization. You go to that website, punch it in. Most of the time, a little bit of research and and you can find it. So the problem is if is that certificate, the certificate of the factory where you want to produce. So you can get a the certificate for the neighbor <laughs> might be legitimate, exactly. but you want to place the factory here. So usually when you're hiring an inspection or an auditor, they will actually get a photocopy of the business license, which legally must be on the wall visibly at any location. They'll take that down, call the local municipality, and say, at this address in Chinese, is it valid? So. Um, I mean, when we're dealing with wholesalers and they send us the certification for a specific product, how can we make sure that you, you have to assume the worst? And for example, I have <coughs> clients who deal in toys, so products for babies and children that are purchased at the wholesale level, maybe 10,000 units of this, 100, uh, 100 units sometimes of, of, of that. And you can't rely that the mark is, mark is valid, so you have to do the work of actually taking a representative sample. And that's up for debate. Is representative 10% one piece? But you, know, you might want to talk to a, a consultant, a, lay, a, lead, a lawyer in your home market. But the key is at least you do something. So if anything goes wrong, you can at least say, we, we, we tried to make sure that the product conformed. We did all the right moves. So that protects you legally. So you would actually have to take that product, send it to a lab, and say, does, does this conform? In our home market. Yes. But that laboratory is probably based in China that can test to the standard of your home market. So you don't have to send samples all around the world and pay hundreds and thousands of dollars. Would you recommend a specific website where we can find laboratories? Oh, you can go China. to, you know, there, there are some in the, in the audience here that, that okay. you can visit with. Uh, Thank you. you. Know, I, I'd be happy to introduce you to the ones that I've done. So let, let, talk to many of them because they have different specializations and you'll find the right one. So, just like finding a supplier, you need to do your homework. Thank you. You're welcome.